Hello, friends. Welcome to the Logistics of Logistics podcast. My name is Joe Lynch. Thank you so much for joining us today. On the Logistics of Logistics, I talk to experts in logistics and transportation, warehousing, fulfillment, supply chain, and of course, technology. And during these interviews, I'm always the one asking the dumb questions. I ask the dumb questions so you don't have to. Hi, Ben. How's it going? Hey, Joe. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. Please introduce yourself and your company and what you guys do. Yeah, my name is Ben Emmerich. I'm the co-founder and CEO of Tusk Logistics, and we're a national network of the best regional parcel carriers that puts shippers first with lower costs, reliable service, and proactive support on every parcel. Interesting, interesting. So you small parcel, I think UPS, I think FedEx. I know uh, we could also say USPS, who works with uh, small parcels sometimes. Uh, and then we got all those last mile carriers. Now, I know, and I've talked to you before about this, there's all these regional carriers. So explain your relationship to those regional carriers. Yeah, so you should think about Tusk as an intermediary between shippers and the regional carriers. So what we do is we enable shippers, folks with parcel volume, to access all of these regional carrier networks from within one connection. So via our connection, they can get pre-negotiated rates with regional carriers like GLS on the West Coast, Better Trucks, UDS, LSO, Courier Express, CDL. Our network covers 72% of the U.S. population. And for every parcel that we serve, on average, we lower pricing by 40% per piece. So really significant savings via a really easy to access network. Now, when you say you cover 72%, if, can I only use region to region or can I get a regional carrier to pick it up and then another regional carrier to deliver it on the other side of the country? Yeah, good question. So what we do is we start by servicing just the regional that is closest to a shipper's building. That's the easiest way to get activated. Uh, but we have connected our regionals, regional carriers together as well. So we're running line halls that connect our region so that we can go from, for example, the Northeast into the Midwest. Um, from the West Coast into the Midwest, we're finding that those zone skip direct inject line hauls are a really good way to increase the value we drive for shippers. Well, I, I know this to be true uh, in a lot of cases is when you start do, looking at small parcel shipping, a lot of it, for a lot of shippers, most of their shipping is in their own region. I mean, the oftentimes what we find with our shippers is that just for the region within their building, within which their building sits, their origin point sits, we oftentimes see roughly 30% of their overall volume bound for within, call it 250 miles of their origin point. So there's significant opportunity just by starting with the regional that serves the region that your building sits within. Yep. I have talked to people on my podcast for years now about when is somebody... I was thinking a venture capitalist or private equity company or some other company going to buy up sure. all these regional companies and make a, a, a true competitor for UPS and FedEx. You guys haven't consolidated by buying them all. You've consolidated by connecting them all with technology. Am I right to say that? Yeah. Yeah. We have not bought any regional carriers. <laughs> we are not a private equity firm. Um, what we are is a really strong channel partner for each of these regional carriers. So what we've done is we've gone out and secured negotiated rates with each regional. And then we facilitate the movement of parcels from a shipper's warehouse directly into the regional carrier's sortation hub. So the regional carriers really find this um, to be fruitful for their network because they just get to receive labeled volume directly into their operation they get to sweat their assets over a larger number of parcels. And the shippers, our customers, like it because we handle all of the operations orchestration. So the operational headache of getting those parcels into these regional networks physically, that's something that Tusk takes on for them. Yep. So you said your shippers. So that is uh, what I'm reading into that is you are responsible for my shipment. At no point will I talk to someone from Tusk and who will say, Oh yeah, call those other guys that <laughs> we gave it to. They're, it's their problem. <laughs> yeah, the buck stops with us, Joe. So, you know, we are the shipper's partner for these parcels. And what that means in practice is that when there's an issue, 
first of all, when there's an issue, we try to fix it and we try to fix it proactively. Um, if we can't fix it proactively, we notify the shipper right away. Or if the shipper notices an issue, they come to Tusk for a resolution. We don't ever kind of like point the finger at the final mile carrier and say, hey, sorry, Joe, not our issue. You got to go to this guy on the West Coast or this guy on the East Coast or this guy in Texas. No, no, no. We, we take full responsibility and we hunt down the issues and the resolutions for our shippers. You know, tell me, so I know you mentioned you have all these regional small parcel carriers who compete against UPS and FedEx in their regions are probably even better than UPS and FedEx. Um, am I going into multiple systems or do you have one system that lets me stay in one interface? <laughs> even better. What we've done is we've integrated our technology into the existing systems that run warehouses today. So think of like the, the transportation management system or warehouse management system, systems like Deposco, ShipStation, Lodua, InfoPlus, all of those systems that warehouse operators are using today to run their day-to-day -day operations, Tusk is natively integrated on those platforms. So we live as a carrier option within those platforms, and then we can earn the volume on our merits when we are cheaper or faster on any given parcel. So it's a way for us to go to a warehouse operator and say, hey, Joe, you're on Deposco. No new software is required to activate Tusk. Just check the box within your settings to activate Tusk as a carrier option, and then Tusk will win the volume when we're cheaper and faster. Nice. So are you looking to go to these warehouse companies and say, we will replace FedEx or UPS in your system? We are not ever going to replace FedEx or UPS whole hog. Where we do best is as a strong number two in a building. So we're a, we're a wonderful lever that warehouse operators can use to find savings, to increase their leverage with their legacy national parcel carrier the next time they go up for negotiation or the next time they get hit with an unexpected surcharge. And we increase their optionality day to day, meaning they have more options when it comes to where to send the given parcel and we have extra capacity. So especially as, you know, the potential for a strike on the Teamster side comes comes to the fore, you know, Tusk is a meaningful option for extra capacity that gives folks uh, more ways to get those parcels to their end customer. Yep. And I do know this, UPS and FedEx, great companies, um, they are for-profit organizations and they are going to charge more for certain um, certain business than for other businesses. So and that's their way of discouraging it. We all do that, right? There's, there's business that I don't want, so I might price that higher. Um, if it's not a good fit for them, why give it to them? You know, if it's, if you look and say there's UPS price, there's FedEx price. Oh, and then 30% lower is the Tusk price. Oh, and it's faster. Why not? It's that optionality for free is, is I think what you said before we hit record. <laughs> yeah. And it's also, it gets, you know, Joe, it gets the nature of those um, national networks. Like they offer an incredible service and they cover every zip code every day. Right. Which means that they cover rural Wyoming as well as Metro Houston. Our network, the Tusk network, explicitly does not cover the rural zip codes. So we focus on the areas with population density, oftentimes major metros or the surrounding suburbs. As a result, we, we focus where the volume is. So we cover 72% of the U.S. population, um, and that accounts for the over the overwhelming majority of especially e-commerce. Yeah, and again, it's covering 72% of the uh, population when you're not saying I want to replace UPS or FedEx, well, good. It's just uh, just another another option that I don't have to take, but in many cases, it's going to be cheaper and faster. I can. I, we are a strong a strong number two. You can always throw that money out if you don't need it. <laughs> the savings, just throw it away if you don't want it. <laughs> <laughs> well, what we find actually is, you know, you say the word savings, and, and that's what it is. Like we're lowering shipping costs. But many of our shippers are 3PLs. And so the, the nature of a 3PLs business model is that savings on shipping is actually increased revenue for them. So it's an increased revenue opportunity for many of our 3PL partners. It's not just like a, 
a savings line at the bottom of the PL. This is a top line revenue opportunity for folks to meaningfully get more competitive on their last month. So, so I, I've been in the three PL sales, and I can tell you, you don't get to play if you don't bring savings. And yeah. for the most part, I can say this in my experience. Um, and again, this is no, no, um, slight to UPS or FedEx, they don't have to negotiate with you. They are UPS or FedEx. <laughs> they don't have to be the lowest price to win that national business. And they know it. But as UPS, or I'm sorry, as a 3PL sales guy, you don't get to play unless you're bringing some savings. If you say, well, we're worth a lot faster. Mm, nice. How much savings? <laughs> what higher quality? Yeah, how, how much savings? It keeps coming back to that. A hundred percent. You know, just to kind of put a finer point on it, the Postal Service, which is a great option for parcel, they just came out with the ground advantage service level. So they combined first class, parcel select to a degree, um, and those are competitive rates for final mile parcel delivery across the whole U.S. Those rates are significantly above where Tusk is on parcel. So to put a finer point on it, like a, a, an average e-commerce parcel, call it a three pound parcel, to go zone three with ground advantage is like $7.75. I think it's $7.73. With us, that same parcel is six eighty seven, And with Tusk, there's no fuel no resi, it is a loaded rate like the postal service at almost a dollar in savings off the top. Very nice, very nice stuff. So who's the sweet spot for you guys? Who does who does Tusk work with best? We work best with two types of e-commerce shipper. The first is a direct-to-consumer e-commerce merchant that self-fulfills. We do best with e-commerce brands that have north of $3 million in, in annual sales. Uh, we find that if their parcel profile looks more like um, items over a pound, that's especially where we do well. Um, so a direct-to-consumer e-commerce merchant that self-fulfills, that has over $3 million in sales, and has items that weigh more than a pound. And then our second uh, target shipper is a 3PL or 4PL that serves e-commerce volume of a similar characteristic. Uh, so think parcels over a pound, um, especially if they have multiple fulfillment nodes, so multiple warehouses, that means that they're very likely to be deeper within the regional network, aka more parcels can go with the regional carriers. So when you say 3PL, you mean warehousing and fulfillment companies? Warehousing and fulfillment companies. Many of the the guests on logistics of logistics. Um, <laughs> yes. They, and by the way, I have talked to many of the people. Um, I say, hey, do you guys know Tusk? And um most of them already do, but the ones that don't, as soon as you say it, you, you said it to me before, people don't believe you when you save, you can save up to 40%. And, and when I say, hey, this is an, a third option, they're like, oh, okay, I, I need that third option. And you say, well, yeah, you can save 40%. You can almost get that sense like, yeah, okay, enough already. <laughs> if I'm being honest, Joe, we find that the savings is like the, it's the ticket to the dance. It's kind of like what gets us the conversation with a 3PL. Where we, where we find a lot of difficulty activating is that 3PLs are busy. Like their bandwidth is just so constrained. Yes. And the savings is not enough. Um, and so bluntly, what we've done is built a lot of features within our product platform around other ways to drive value to folks like 3PLs. So think of things like reporting. Think of things like proactive claim filings. So they don't have to like deal with the hassle of submitting claims for lost items. Uh, think of things like, you know, us monitoring every parcel in real time, handling all of the daily pickups uh, from their facilities. These are all things that not just save them on like a, on a weekly invoice. It actually saves them labor time. Hey, like, and that's, that's on us. We got to prove our value over time and we will, and, and we continue to do so. It's just fighting the bandwidth at folks. like you know. That is getting people's attention, getting their time is not easy. You got to Yeah. And uh, I'll throw another thing out there. And again, no slight on UPS and FedEx. I, I use them. We all use them. They're invaluable. 
Um, if you call and say, hey, I got a problem, <laughs> you, are, um, you are not necessarily going to get uh, service. You more or less are told to go online and take care of it. It's, uh, it's a little different vibe. I get that. I understand why that has to be that way. But um, you guys are different because you're, you have to earn that business. You're not UPS and FedEx just yet. We are young. We are scrappy. But we're also deeply integrated into the regional carriers that we use, right? Like we can offer this real-time parcel monitoring because our regional carrier partners have opened up really meaningful access to us technically and operationally. So we can see where those parcels are in real time. We can, we can notify a shipper if a parcel is sat in a hub for longer than we expected. This is a level of, you know, visibility and insight that has never before existed at scale across multiple regional networks. Yep. I'll throw another thing out there is we had during COVID, which I don't think we'll ever forget. Um, during COVID, we needed options um, for trucks. We didn't necessarily always get. We had problems at the port. There was not a lot of alternatives. When somebody says, my stuff is stuck in LA or Long Beach or it's sitting in a warehouse and I can't get it out. We all need options. And I think we realized how desperately, desperately we need options. Well, we're already in July, soon to be August. We're going to get to Christmas season. And we all know UPS and FedEx, it's a heroic effort. Every holiday season, you need that third, third option. So I, I, I can't, I don't understand why. So if it's free to just say, yeah, we got this. What does it hurt? Uh, I mean, you're preaching to the choir here, Joe. I, th I think that the reason, like, when I was on the shipper side, especially during peak, it wasn't even the capacity issue as much as it was the holiday surcharge. And, like, the holiday surcharge was an added layer of cost that for certain parcels, that extra cost just, you know, it put the whole order into the red. And having a a different option for a portion of those parcels that might get hit with a, a sizable holiday surcharge with other carriers. I mean, more optionality, more flexibility is better for shippers, especially if it's easy to implement and easy to operate, which we are. Yep. So saying somebody says, I heard you talking to Joe and I absolutely positively want to do this, but I'm busy. How long does it take from the time they call you till the time they've got you integrated in their system? Yeah, two to four weeks is the standard. Um, two to four weeks is like the the center of the bullseye in terms of activation. So that's from initial call uh, to impact analysis, to activation, to go live. Um, I would say it, it stretches a bit beyond the four weeks if it's hard for, for a shipper to send us their data on the front end. That's often a delay that we experience. But if everything is in place and ready to go, we can be up and running within uh, two to four weeks. You guys start using your new system. Is there training? Is there uh, is there a, or is there a learning curve to this? Uh, there is oftentimes, quite honestly, Joe. The only learning curve is the fact that the warehouse teams have to expect another carrier option within whatever rate shop engine they use. And then they have to basically put the physical parcels into a separate sortation lane. So that could be a separate pallet or a separate Gaylord. Um, those are the two training steps that need to be done. Um, but we, we actively send members of the TUS team on site for most of our onboarding. So we conduct those trainings uh, for our shippers. Uh, we also do things like help ship station users with automation, filtering, and tagging. Um, we go into each of our TMS and WMS providers to make sure that their system is not just optimized to take advantage of Tusk, but optimized in general to find extra value, whether that's faster speeds, lower costs. We have a lot of that expertise in house and we share it with our ship. So I'm sold, Ben. How do we do this? How do we sign up? <laughs> the easiest thing is to, to send, send me an email. So ben at tusklogistics.com. Um, from there, uh, I'll connect you, uh, to either my operations team or my sales team, or quite honestly, I'll get my hands dirty and ask a couple follow-up questions. We do best if you can also send us a month's worth of your parcel data. With that, we do an impact analysis. We scope out the savings and then we map an integration and a go live. So you can tell them a, 
I looked at your last month, you spent $100,000. Had you used us, we would have taken, I'll just make this. Eight grand, it would be the savings. So if you spent the 100 grand last month, on average, we save folks eight grand, so 8%. Damn, that's serious money in this business. Yeah, it's 80K, I think like, you know, that's that's a marketing manager that you can hire that you couldn't before. That's, you know, a couple of warehouse operators. That's a, a new system that increases your efficiency. That's it's meaningful savings. And in this business, as you know, Joe, we live in a game of inches. <laughs> yeah, especially now. And I, I talk to a lot of warehousing companies, a lot of fulfillment companies. There's some struggle going on right now. The e-commerce business in general hasn't been as successful as we all hoped it would be. Um, and uh, the VCs are kind of backing down on the on that new funding for all of the uh, companies out there. We got to we got to roll up our sleeves and save money the old fashioned way. <laughs> the only the only way forward is through, and you just gotta like dive in. Like you gotta take a hard look at every line in your PL. And for e-commerce shippers, one of the biggest lines is the cost of their last mile shipping. On average, it's 13% of the total basket. So if you sell $100 worth of items, you're probably going to spend $13 shipping those items, uh, not even including fulfillment costs like picking and packing. So there's no better place to look for savings than final mile shipping. And there's no better way to save than with Tusk. All right, Ben, what I'll do is I'll put a link in the... Uh... I'll put a link in the uh, in the notes, and so people can reach out and talk to you. And uh, I think it's a fantastic option. I can't I can't envision why someone wouldn't want to do this, other than to your point, they're busy. <laughs> yeah, and and listen, that that should not be discounted. Like bandwidth is, is a serious thing that we need to work through. I, I'll just leave you with Joe. You know, our north star is value to the shipper. Like we will build a successful business, continue to build a successful business by focusing on driving value to the shipper. They're the center of our bullseye there, why we exist, and we're excited to keep growing for them. Excellent. Excellent. Well, thanks for taking the time, Ben. Thank you, Joe. Appreciate you. You have been listening to the Logistics of Logistics podcast, where we engage with leaders in the logistics and supply chain community. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, hit the like button, and leave us a nice review on Apple or Spotify or wherever else you listen. Also, please check out our videos on YouTube and connect with us on LinkedIn. We're very big on LinkedIn. And you can also reach us on the logisticsoflogistics.com, our website.